for something about that name. Promises. Ask you to stand while we're singing this, okay? <clears throat>
seated now. Good morning, good morning. Good to see you all this morning. Good to see a bunch of guests this morning. It's a good day in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Let's look at our announcements this morning. Um, how many times am I going to say morning? Uh, study of Revelation is still going on each Sunday night at 6 p.m. So if you're free on Sunday nights, come down and uh, study Revelation with Brother Kevin. And on Sunday, September 8th, uh, let's remember there's going to be a deacons meeting at 5 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. That's next Sunday, September 8th. Se Sunday, September 15th, in the morning service, we will have the ladies from Project Hope and Saving Grace in Russellville, Arkansas, sharing their testimonies. So please be sure to come and experience what God is doing in their lives each year. They are such a blessing to us. Um, and that will be on the 15th. Sunday, September 29th, we will have a special music guest, Joe Love, in the morning service, and that is also our fifth uh, Sunday, so we will have communion after the special music. Sunday night on the 29th, we will have a potluck, a church-wide potluck uh, at 6 p.m., so bring a dish filled with your favorite food, fried chicken, uh, and a new member class, um, still looking to see if there's any interest in a new member 101 class where we take a look at uh, basic doctrines of the Bible, becoming a Christian, and being a Christian in today's world. If you are interested, um, contact Brother Kevin. And Coffee and Donuts will be on the second Thursday, which is September 12th. Uh, Baby Cakes is closed on Tuesday, so they moved it to a Thursday. That will be the second Thursday, uh, September 12th. Wash meeting will be next Sunday, uh, September 8th at 4 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. And Dixie Jackson Prayer Week starts on September 8th and goes through the 15th. This marks the start of our Dixie Jackson offering for the month of September. So let's come together and make a difference right here in Arkansas by reaching people for Christ. Let's prayerfully consider our offerings this year as we aim to achieve our goal. And our goal this year is $3,500. So that will be this month. Do we have any more announcements? Do we have any prayer requests this morning? Well, it's good to be here. Uh, oh, Lily, you got one? Let's hear it, Lily. She, she twisted her ankle, is that what you're saying? Oh, okay. Okay, Allie fell over her own shoe and twisted her ankle. Okay, so we want to pray for Allie's ankle. She's on crutches, okay. If there are no more, Dr. Wright, would you lead us in prayer this morning? Well, this is the first Sunday of the month, September the 1st, and maybe we have some birthday people out there this, this morning. If you have a birthday during the month of September, would you please stand up? <laughs> wow. A lot of birthday babies. Let's sing happy birthday to these folks. Here we go. Happy birthday.
Miss Betty had a special birthday party yesterday. And she's, look here, we got about three, one, two, three, four pews almost full of people. And uh, I saw her shedding a few tears a while ago. But Miss Betty, happy birthday to you. God bless you. All right. Well, what about wedding anniversaries? Do you have a wedding anniversary during the month of September? Would you please stand up? Wedding anniversary. Wedding anniversary. Okay, Wayne, your wife is standing up and you're standing up. So how many years have y'all been married? Why well, you ask me? Fourteen, I think. Fourteen, is that right? Hey. Yeah. All right. She nodded, so you're she nodded. You're good. And of course, I see Amanda back there standing up, so that means you're, you're, you got the anniversary. How many years have y'all been married? Well, I was smart. I got married in 2000, so whatever year it is, how many years we've been married? So 24. 24, all right. And Aaron, I see Emily standing up. How many years have y'all been married? Nine wonderful years. Nine, all right. And let me make my way back here. Brother Glenn, how many years y'all been married? Forever. <laughs> 58 years. 58 years. And of course, Miss Nadine, uh, her and Brother Stan, how long would y'all been married if he'd lived? 70. Woo, 70 years. Let's sing happy anniversary to these folks, all right? In the garden. Thank you. 
Good morning, y'all. We've got a couple songs for worship this morning, so please sing with us.
just uh, Father we just thank you so much for your love God just be with us here in this place Father send your spirit to comfort those in need Father to bring healing to those in need and Father to bring strength in those in need God you are all things to all people and we just invite you here in this place Father, we pray our worship has been pleasing. And Father, we look forward to hearing your word. Be with Brother Kevin as he brings it. And Father, just let it soak into our hearts and in our minds as we leave this place. That we be your hands and feet. And show your love to those around us. Father, we ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. He's worthy of our praise this morning. And maybe you have a word of testimony you'd like to share this morning. I want to give you an opportunity to do that. A word of testimony, anybody?
Brother Keith. Good morning, everybody. I've been debating for the last three Sundays that I've been here whether I should get up and say something. And I, I always just feel really small when I don't say something. It's like if you can't say something for the Lord in the Lord's house, then they're really having a problem. And, and I do have a problem in, in society of saying what I need to say to other people recognize me as, as one of God's children instead of just somebody because I don't look right or something, you know. And uh, I also want to say something about prayer again. I, I, I appreciate everybody in here that's prayed for my family, my, my mom and my dad. Dad's just, I don't know how many weeks he's made church now, but I feel really grateful, but also I'm still tore up in here, you know, and it's, it's, uh, it's hard to, for me to get anything done on a time scale. So I had trouble getting here this morning because mornings are just a tough part for me. Now I want to divulge too much. Just uh, I'm grateful to be here. I didn't think I'd be here today. And, and praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Someone else. Let's go ahead and dismiss for Children's Church then. Children's Church.
Amen. Thank you, Marissa. So good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. All of our visitors, we're glad you're here. God bless you. Thank you for coming today. If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, please be turning to the book of Habakkuk. The book of Habakkuk. And I'll tell you what, I'll give you some extra time to find it. And I'll even give you a hint. It's in the Old Testament, okay? It's in the Old Testament. Uh, there's Isaiah and Ezekiel and Daniel, and you'll just keep moving to the right, and you will find it. Oh, by the way, if you happen to see uh, Zechariah, you've gone too far, all right? Turn back a few pages. And if you're seeing some words in red, you've really gone too far to the right, so back up a pretty good little ways. But anyway, I remember going to a revival in South Mississippi uh, a few years back. And there was an evangelist that was speaking, and he got up and he said, Everyone turn to the book of Hezekiah. That's going to be our text for tonight. And so I began to hear a lot of pages ruffling, and uh, people began to look at one another. And uh, the reason they were turning so many pages and looking at one another, there is not a book uh, by the name of Hezekiah. So, But there is a book called Habakkuk for sure, all right? So... Please be turning there. Today I want to bring you a message entitled, How Can I Hear From God? How can I hear from God? Now I've had people through the years come to, up to me and say, you know, God told me to do this or God told me to do that. And I've always given them the benefit of the doubt. But of course it doesn't mean that I didn't have some personal opinions about what they said or what they said that God said to them. I had a guy come up to me one night after uh, we sang in his church, and he told me, he said, God came to me one night in a dream, and he gave me a song and said, I wrote the song down. And he opened his Bible, and he pulled out a piece of paper and gave it to me, and I read the words of this song, and uh, it was the most awful song I've ever read in my whole life. And I thought to myself, well, you know, either God is an awful songwriter or this fellow was a little confused about the voice of God. You know, I've had people to come up to me and say, God told me to tell you this. God told me to tell you that. And, I, you know, I was respectful to them and I listened to what they had to say. But truthfully, I wondered within myself, you know, why didn't God just tell me this himself? Because I am listening. But uh, some of you are old enough to remember a man by the name of Oral Roberts. Anybody? A lot of hands going up. But if you remember, Oral Roberts one time said that God told him if he didn't raise $8 million that God was going to take him. God was going to kill him. Now, I don't know what God told Oral, but I do wonder and I do have my doubts about that statement. On the other hand... I do know that the voice of God speaks to people. Amen? Amen? He does speak to people. Like one time I was having some bad days and a friend of mine that I hadn't talked to in years and years and years, he called me, I mean just right out of the blue. And he said, God spoke to me this morning in my prayer time and he told me that I needed to call you and encourage you today. I believe God really spoke to that man. Amen? You know, the Bible is filled with people that God spoke to. And I'm convinced that God still speaks to people today. Amen. I'm one of them. Amen. And I know a lot of you, God speaks to you also. Some of you today may be wondering, well, where is God's voice in my life? I need to hear from God. I need, to, uh, I need a word from God. I need some reassurance in my life. I need some comfort in my life. I need some direction in my life. I need to hear the word of God in my life. Where is the word of God and how can I hear from him? Well, in this little prophetic book of Habakkuk that we're in this morning, just three short chapters, we find some principles that show us how we can hear the voice of God, how we can hear from God. Let's turn to chapter 3, Habakkuk chapter 3, and I want to read just a few verses this morning, uh, verses 17 through 19 in Habakkuk chapter 3. If you have that, say, I have it, Pastor. Would you please stand with me in the reverence of the reading of God's Word? Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines... 
Though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet and he will make me walk on my high heels. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word. May it sink deep into our hearts today and change us. We ask this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Now, one thing we can certainly say about Habakkuk, he was a man who knew how to hear God's voice. And God used Habakkuk in a mighty, mighty way to reach his generation. So how can you and I be like Habakkuk today? How can we be those who can hear the voice of God and know how to hear the voice of God? How can we be sure not to miss the voice of God when he speaks to us? Well, there's several things we can do. First of all, don't be afraid to ask the difficult questions. Don't be afraid to ask the difficult questions. Questions. Look back in chapter 1 of Habakkuk. Look at verses 2 and 3. He says, O Lord, how long shall I cry, and you will not hear? Even cry out to you violence, and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? And then look at verse 5. We see God's response to Habakkuk's question. Look among the nations and watch, he says. Be utterly astounded. For I will work a work in your days which you will not believe, though it were told you. Now, if you read on, you'll see that God tells him that there's going to be a violent army that's coming, that's going to march on the land. And, you know, I think Habakkuk is like us sometimes. He wasn't really sure that he was satisfied with the answer that God gave him. So he asked Again, in verse 12, look at it in verse 12 of 1. Are you not from everlasting, O Lord my God, my Holy One? We shall not die. O Lord, you have appointed them for judgment. O Rock, you have marked them for correction. And what basically Habakkuk was saying here was, Lord, you don't plan to wipe us out, do you? You don't plan to wipe us out, do you, Lord? Now, let's be clear. He wasn't arguing with God. He wasn't shaking his fist at God. But he was speaking with reverence. He said, my Holy One, you who are eternal. Now, he was trying to make sure he was understanding what God was saying. And you know, I've been told over and over and over in my life, you're not supposed to question God. Have you heard that before? You're not supposed to question God. Never question God. But the truth is, a lot of people in the Bible had questions for God. Like Moses, for one. He asked God why many times. If we want to hear from God, I think we must be like Habakkuk and be willing to ask those difficult questions. Habakkuk wasn't even finished. Look look at verse 13 through 17 in chapter 1. You are of pure eyes than to behold evil and cannot look on wickedness. Why do you look on those who deal treacherously? And hold your tongue when the wicked devours a person more righteous than he. Why do you make men like fish of the sea, like creeping things that have no ruler over them? They take up all of them with a hook. They catch them in their net and gather them in the dragnet. Therefore, they rejoice and are glad. Therefore, they sacrifice to their net. They burn incense to their dragnet because by them their snare is sumptuous and their food plentiful. Shall they therefore empty their net and continue to slay nations without pity? Listen, I know sometimes things happen. Sometimes God allows things to happen in our lives. Things we don't understand. Things we don't like. Things we don't agree with. Things that even make us ask why. Why did this happen? Why did that happen? You know, I prayed before myself that God would do things differently. I prayed before myself that God would intervene in situations in my life. But a lot of times the truth is God doesn't. God doesn't. And when this happens, I can either stomp my foot, stomp my feet, and raise my fist to God, 
or I can bore my heart out to him. And that's what Habakkuk did. He poured his heart out to him. I can cry out, Lord God, my Holy One, why is this happening? What are you trying to teach me, O oh God? How do you want me to respond to this situation that I'm in? Where do you want me to go from here, O oh Lord? You know, through the years I've learned that many times hearing from God begins with a struggle. It begins with a struggle in our life. It begins with actually wrestling through some difficult questions, some difficult times. So let me tell you this morning, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask God difficult questions. It's okay to do that. It's okay to do that. Because guess what? He can handle it. Amen? He can handle it. Don't be afraid to ask God the difficult questions. Secondly, if you want to hear from God, put yourself in the best place possible. Put yourself in the best place possible. Look at what Habakkuk does in verse 1 of chapter 2. Verse 1 of chapter 2, he says, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Another translation says this, I will climb up to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. There I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. See, in biblical days, the cities, they had stone watchtowers built along their walls around the city so that the watchmen within the watchtowers, they could see their friends, they could see their enemies, they could even see messengers coming a long ways off. And here is what Habakkuk is saying here in chapter 2, verse 1. I'm going to put myself in the best possible place to hear God's voice because I don't want to miss what God has to say to me. Now, where do you think the best possible place is for you to listen to God's voice? Where is the best possible place that you can put yourself to hear God's voice? Well, I think, first of all, spending time in his word is a good place to put yourself in order to hear the voice of God. I think another place is listening to people that you respect, that, that, that speak truth, people that you trust. I think that's another good place to put yourself in order to hear the voice of God. Spending time with God's people in God's house on Sundays and Wednesdays, it's a good place for you to be in order to hear the voice of God. And I think just spending time with God in general, just spending time with God in general, as in some quiet time, in some time of prayer, in some time of just listening to the voice of God, that's a good place to put yourself in order to hear the voice of God. I will tell you this, spending one hour a week with God is not enough time to hear his voice. Ooh. Did you hear that? Spending one hour a week with God is not enough time to hear his voice. What kind of relationship would you have with your spouse if you only spent one hour a week with them? You would probably have a D-I-V-O-R-C-E relationship. Amen? So one hour a week is not enough time. We need to spend time with God. We need to spend time with him. We need time away from the noise and the confusion and the doubt, away from the voices of those who don't know what they're talking about. We need time away from those people who only criticize and complain. We need time away from those people who are always gossiping. We need time away from this world. We need time away from social media. We need time away from all the drama and the mess that's going on in the world. We need what we call a cow gone moment. Some of the folks in here remember those commercials, right? Amen. Some of y'all YouTube it when you get home. I need a cow gone moment. <laughs> we need time away from everything to be with God if we want to hear his voice. And I know God can do anything. But I think it would be hard to hear the voice of God in one ear if we're listening to the world with the other ear. Amen. I had a lady in, uh, in my first pastorate who had divorced her husband, and she came in one Sunday telling everybody that God had given her a fine new Christian man and said, 
we're engaged. We got engaged last night and said, but God give me a good one this time. He's a fine Christian man. And after church, I was talking with her and I said, well, where did you meet this fella at? And she said, well, well now, preacher, I hate to tell you this, but said, uh, we met at a bar down in Hattiesburg. That's where we met. Now, that's not exactly putting yourself in a place to, to hear God's voice where he can reveal his will for your life. Amen? So I ask you this morning, what can you do to prepare yourself and position yourself to hear the voice of God? Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. He was saying, I'm going to look out over the horizon. I'm going to be looking every moment over the horizon to see where I can hear the voice of God when he speaks to me. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss the voice of God. Habakkuk put himself in the best place possible. In other words, when God's ready to speak, I want to be ready to listen. Amen. Now, let me stop right there and ask you something this morning. Are you listening to the voice of God? Are you listening to the voice of God? Are you listening for the voice of God? You may be thinking, well, preacher, I don't really need to hear the voice of God. Everything's going fine in my life. Man, I got everything under control. I don't really need to hear from God. Let me tell you something. Every one of us needs to hear the voice of God in some area of our life. Amen? Amen? And if we'll listen, he'll speak. If we'll listen, he'll speak. Now, he may not tell us what we want to hear. But if we are a child of God, let me tell you, his messages will always be good news. May not be what we want to hear, but it'll always be good news if we're a child of God. Because Romans 8, 28, for all things work together for the good to them who love the Lord and call according to his purpose. Amen. You have the choice today to listen. You have the choice today to believe. You have the choice today to obey. You have the choice today to act on his word or to dismiss it, dismiss it all. That's your choice. God is speaking. He's even speaking this morning. Do you hear him? Do you hear the voice of God speaking this morning? Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you in a position to hear him? So don't be afraid to ask God the difficult questions. And put yourself in a place to hear from God. We've got three more points, but you know what? You're going to have to wait the next week to hear them because it's going to be to be continued. You know, as I was preparing today's message, a song came to my mind, a song written by Andre Crouch a long, long, long time ago, back in 1974. But it was a wonderful song. It talks about how everything we're going through God is in a process of teaching us. We're in the process of learning to depend on God. Learning to depend on His Word. I want you to think about this morning as I sing this song to you. Through it all. tears and sorrows I've had questions for tomorrow there's been times I didn't even know right from wrong but in every situation God gave me blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong I've been to a lot of places I've seen a lot of faces But there's been times that I felt so all alone 
It was in those lonely hours, those precious lonely hours, Jesus let me know that I was still His own. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. Amen. So I thank God for the mountains and I thank Him for my valleys and I thank Him for every storm He's brought me through. See, if I never had a problem, how would I know that God could solve them? How would I know what faith in God could do through it all through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus I've learned to trust in God through it all through it all this song with me through it all through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus I've learned to trust in God through it all through it all I've learned to depend on his word thank you so much for watching today we're going to say goodbye to our facebook and youtube family